Welcome back to another episode of Harmonious at Lunch. We got a fun one teed up for you today. I'm excited. I'm a little nervous. I'm not really sure what's in store, but I know we're going to have a good time. I have with me the Sage of Silicon Valley. Before we get there, though, let's just recap. Where are we? What is Harmonious? Harmonious is the disruptive business architecture that the Fortune 500 uses that most small businesses don't. It is the context, the framework to run your business so that you can scale and grow efficiently. Today, we're going to be touching on a number of different elements within the architecture. And I think we're going to also be reading some minds. Well, I'm not, but I think my guests might a little bit. So let's dive in. Dan, I want to welcome you to Harmonious at Lunch. Thanks for being here. Thank you for having me, Brandon. Yeah. So let's let's start off with your name. First and foremost, on the screen, it says Sage of Silicon Valley. Can you tell me and the listeners a little bit about what that means? You guys know the Oracle Omaha, Warren Buffett. Um, and this is my new rebrand and my latest pivot that I'm moving toward. I, I always like to sh future pace where I'm going to go. I first started off as Dan Chan, Magic Man. Um, then I went to Dan Chan, Master Magician, then the Millionaire's Mentalist. And now that I have done close to 600 virtual shows, um, 52 shows in a week, 12 shows in a day, eight shows back to back on a half an hour. You can learn more about that at millionairesmentalist.com. Now I perform for many large companies, including Google recently, and I have given them product suggestions and uh, YouTube suggestions. And I plan on um, investing more in those companies. And for small startups, I want to give my advice in exchange for shares of stock, which um, I did participate in Airbnb's IPO, uh, being one of their first hosts. So uh, there's a CNBC article that uh, I'm going to put in the chat, and you can share that with all our followers. Yeah, that's awesome. I'll be sure. And Dana sent me a number of things before we got started here. I'm going to link everything in the show notes. Um, so, so wherever you're watching or listening to this, just look down below. It'll be there. Now, tell me, th these are interesting clients and very high profile clients. The topic of today's episode is, is how to connect with key decision makers and buyers, uh, specifically on LinkedIn. So most of us are not trying to go get Google and Zoom as our clients, but we are trying to connect with people who have busy schedules and, and full inboxes. So can you speak a little bit about how you leverage these strategies to connect with people in business? Yeah, the first thing is a service attitude, adding value, whether it's even a like or an affirmation or support. Um, when you're giving value or emitting value, people will gravitate toward you. If you try to sell first, people are going to be repelled. But you can also sell at a very low price point to kick away um, those who are just trying to uh, kick at the tires. Mm. So you can also offer a low price point. And once you have a couple, just start pivoting and saying, hey, this is for the first hundred. That's exactly what I did this morning. I made a video. I said, this is for the first hundred people. And then afterwards, I'm really going to raise my rate because once I made $500 off a quick tutorial, I'm going to try to make it a lot better. And sometimes it's okay to be good enough. You're testing a market at a low price point. A lot of people are trying to go very high, very fast. I started with kids' birthday parties, and that's the work. It's doing the things that no one wants to do and then getting your foot in the door. People are asking, oh, how did you do this? Uh, quite frankly, I started with a lot of corporate picnics that were like low level, you know, half the price as everyone else. But you don't want to stay there. People are going to hate you when you continue to do that. So now I'm trying to pivot so that I'm more expensive than everyone else. Because now that your foot's in the door, you've done it so many times, you should be charging a lot more. You should be charging what you're worth. But just getting your foot in the door is the name of the game. And that's by not just asking, hey, Dan, I want to connect with you on LinkedIn. It's like I have hundreds of people wanting to connect. Right. I've been following you. I saw you on Harmonious. I loved what you said here. I saw this recent article that you wrote. I saw that you're featured in this or that. And that actually shows that you're not spamming. If I just see a high and I'm going to sell you something, I'm going to delete it immediately. And I'm sure you do the same. You get scams, you get all these things. But 
most influencers want to get a further reach. If they're posting someone, they want validation, a ha ha or something. Even if you write respond to, cut and paste that in chat GPT, you'll probably find something that's creative. Hmm. You can say respond to with something intriguing or funny or whatever your tone is. And that's content. That's like, oh, that's a blip on the radar. Imagine if before I tried selling you something, I clicked liked on five or 10 of your posts. And this, and don't click on the guy like, uh, you know, Gary Vaynerchuk. He, he's not going to, he gets enough likes, right? Go that one next level of someone who is only one or two steps ahead of you and interact and create conversation. The guys that are that big, you're not going to have the line to pull the, the, those fish in. So it's really important to know what, who you're hunting or what you're hunting. Yeah, that's a really good tip. And I think, I think people do tend to shoot too big or if, if it's more in that reachable demographic, they think, oh, I can use my throwaway bulk strategy on them because they're, they're a nobody, right? Yeah. So before we started recording here, we were talking about using um, automated reach out tools. Uh, I admitted and will admit here publicly that I have had very little success with them. Um, and I think it, it almost hits on something you were saying about personalizing the outreach. So whether you use these tools or not, what are some of your tips around reaching out to people? Do you do it direct and individual or do you leverage a tool like that can that can make it a little bit more automated? OK, so. A lot of people think just because I pay for something, I can leverage it. But if what you do doesn't it doesn't even work in the first place and you try scaling it, you're going to be throwing money down the toilet. A lot of my best things were before I started using LinkedIn Sales Navigator with these add-ons because I could target everyone who works at Forbes and BuzzFeed and all these things. But the best ones that I had were early on when I didn't have the money, where I was like, I want to get on this. I want to get on BuzzFeed. I want to get on Business Insider. And I would actually write a thoughtful email. And I was like, I was like, you know, during the pandemic, it was like, that was a shot and it had to go. Mm -hmm. If you're just spamming or like just throwing it out there, it's likely not going to have a great response rate. Imagine if try your local newspaper, like try something that's a little bit lower hanging fruit. Because if you're a business person, you can get on the news this New Year's by talking about goal setting. You can say, I'm a business person who's achieved this type of goals. And I would love to share that with the newspaper and then write it with chat GPT and make it sound like it wasn't written with chat GPT. You can, and for those people who are afraid of speaking, which I was in the beginning, write it with chat GPT and write an editorial. I wrote something really quickly to the SF police chief about bait cars because my car got broken into. That was a problem I wanted to solve. And I was like, dude, why don't you put out a bait car? So I wrote a proposal and then I wrote, hi, probably I changed the first name to the police chief and I customized it and I deleted the parts that I didn't think were relevant or that I felt like were AI written. And I made it a lot shorter and then I just sent it. 30 days later, the SF gate, said the police are actually using bait cars. I'm like, that only took me, you know, 30 seconds to throw it in chat GPT plus probably a 10 or 15 minute rewrite at most. But that rewrite is really important with automation tools coming out so quickly, everyone can spray you. And we want to make sure that, you know, the higher profile you get, the more pitches you're going to get. So try to create true conversations and keep in touch with people. Because if you've kept in touch with people and you're celebrating their wins, who's going to respond to your t telephone call? At least you can say, hey, I have the phone number two. And they might not answer as much, but you can actually tell a reporter or use that as a story or get further and further along the, the line. Before, I was never getting on. And, and true story, I would always work through a lot of um, intermediaries for my work, but I started 
controlling the conversation, but I also started being friendly enough and good enough that people are like, oh, I want to connect with you. And I had this top CEO give me his phone number this week, which was a goal I had. So can you converse with regular people and get their phone number often enough? Just try that as a drill. You know, try getting the general manager of uh, Chick-fil-A or so something and then keep on going higher and higher and seeing if you can emit value. But you do need some sometimes tricks in order to get that. And the one trick I used, or I think it was a little bit of a crutch sometimes, was being able to do something like this just changing the perspective and changing this that is pretty cool for those of you listening and not watching dan just turned a one dollar bill into a hundred dollar bill i i can actually i didn't tell you this i can go the opposite way i can turn a hundred into one very quickly <laughs> but i i love that i love that that perspective shift. So um, I apologize for interrupting there, but it, so tell me, tell me about what that means for you and how you take that and you implement it in your outreach strategy. I have done small little tricks to get upgrades on air, on airplanes, you know, like I would wow moments. I didn't have to give away money, but imagine you going out with your friends and you changing a $1 into a hundred and you paying for the bill. Would they remember you or the cashier? You're already going to buy something. And instead of pulling out your credit card, you do that all the time. Well, if you want to do that, I have an offer for you for just $5. I'm going to teach you how to do that. There's no gimmicks or gadgets. It's just pure sleight of hand. You probably can master it in half an hour to an hour. And it's a low hanging fruit that I'm offering because I've preserved these secrets for 20, 25 years. And now I'm sharing some of my best secrets because I have pivoted. I actually don't use that performance. Um, I, I don't even perform that trick anymore. Honestly, I, I, I'm just selling that. And I feel that that trick is so good to get into the door. And there's many other tricks that I'm making. I'm going to be making a course on tricks that can get you past the doorkeeper. That's huge. I think that's where a lot of people get hung up because there's, there's two, two routes on LinkedIn, right? It's the, it's the CEO who is in control of his inbox. And then there's the gatekeeper. And that's probably a bad term for people, but that's where a lot of people get hung up because those people have a tendency to say no because they're protecting somebody's time. But a lot of us do not approach these reach outs with value and we don't put any time into it enough at least to say, you know, I have value to add here and I want to help you rather than I want you to pay me something. Yeah. Or I want you to just connect me or I want you to get rid of the gatekeeper. It's, it's, have we built a relationship? And the first thing about a relationship is contact, whether it's us contacting each other via Zoom or StreamYard. Will they even pick it up? Will they even respond? So if you can't get to picking up the phone, try to add value and not be snarky online. I know it's so easy to be like, <laughs> like say something like weird or out of context. And, you know, there's a lot of people passive aggressive online. And I feel like I was one of those people. So if you see those interactions, you can create something more positive or bring light to that, be, be that light to those people. And I think that's just one or two of the first steps. Everything is easy, but a lot of people are like, I'm not going to do that. I'm too good for that. Mm -hmm. And I, and I, I've, I've seen that, you know, like um, really talented magicians hiding behind just, being a Don Rickles, you know? Yeah. And I think really what I'm hearing is you have to differentiate yourself and be willing to be different, but also wanting to help somebody else. Yes. That's, that seems like it's at the core of what you're saying, um, which I really love and I, I really resonate with. So again, before we started recording, you were, you were hinting at uh, some things with, with me personally, hobbies that I have um, and how to use that to be different in the marketplace. Can you elaborate on that a little bit for the audience? And then we'll tell people where we can uh, connect with you and, and learn more. Yeah. I love wakeboarding or cable wakeboarding. I love windsurfing. I love things um, like spearfishing. Mm -hmm. So you, 
you want to be interesting. You, you don't want to be just being able to do the trick and then afterwards have nothing to talk about. So being passionate about life, spending time for yourself, having connecting with like-minded people. When someone says, oh, I do this, you can say, I do that as well. Oh, what type of sp spear fishing gun do you have? Do you use a pierce bow, uh, um, pull spear or something else? That little interaction makes you more human, like asking about their kids and really being interested. If you're not interested, don't ask, but find something that's in common. But don't bullshit someone by saying, "Hey, uh, how are your kids?" If you don't, if you don't care about their kids, don't ask about it. But find something that you care about together, you know. And that's what like college was about, you know, shooting pool together or whatever it is that you're interested in, and finding people in that space, and then adding value and help people for the first time for free. But ask them for a testimonial. Say, "Can can I help you?" And then can you give me a testimonial? If you, And a testimonial costs nothing. If they got true value out of it, they would reciprocate. Mm -hmm. And it's also validation for you, which is, is not no small value, right? Because then you know you can go into the marketplace and you have a sellable service or product or whatever that is. So, um, yeah, I think that's... Those are really good tips. And, and this whole conversation is, is centered around ubiquity a lot. I mean, we're talking about reaching out to people on LinkedIn. That's, that's sales and marketing. It's how are you presenting yourself to the marketplace? And that's the you and the harmonious architecture. There's a number of other elements at play here. But for me, this is, this is core to how you show up as a business owner, as an entrepreneur, as a business in general, is do you show up with authenticity or are you just in the market to sell things to people? And I think it's very clear who wins long term. It might be a little bit more painful short term. Dan, I think you would agree with that. But in the long run, people want to deal with people who care. Yeah. And I think that's an important distinction here. Given all things equal, I think um, people want to find people who they want to buy from people who they like and trust. And I think that there's one other to, uh, one to that, but it's the likability and trust. And like is finding common interest. Mm. Yeah, that's huge. So listen, there was a, a number of takeaways here. And this was this was a really interesting episode that I was, again, I was a little bit nervous. I saw you pull out the dollar bill in the beginning and I wasn't sure what where we were going with that, but <laughs> this was a great episode. Um, where can people find you? I know you said you have a course coming out soon. Uh, what, do you have a website that we can go? Yeah, um, danchanmagic.com is, is my old website millionairesmentalist.com is where i do virtual shows i'm doing ticketed shows as well if you buy a ticketed uh, ticket to one of my virtual shows afterwards stick around ask me to teach you one or two extra tricks like the um one to 100 i would be more than happy just let me know that you found me through harmonious and i will um give that offer to you and um just lead with value um, that's awesome. All right. I will, if you're watching or listening, just look down below in the show notes, all of that information will be there. Go check out Dan, go check out one of the virtual shows. That sounds really cool to me. Um, and, and this was, this was an amazing episode, Dan, thank you so much for being here and thank you for watching and listening. Be sure to subscribe, like comment, leave your takeaways, your questions. We want to know them. I'll get them to Dan and we'll get them answered. Thank you for being an amazing subscriber and listener of Harmonious at Lunch. I will see you on the next episode.